You want to support Roller Martin Unfiltered? Be sure to join our Bring the Funk fan club. Every dollar that you give to us supports our daily digital show. There's only one daily digital show out here that keeps it black and keep it real. It's Roller Martin Unfiltered. By going to RollerMartinUnfiltered.com, you can make this possible. All right. We got to now. I know we are over our time, but uh, we got to have a family conversation. Okay? We have a family conversation. Okay? And I'm specifically talking right now. To all y'all black folks in Hollywood who have hired your non-black PR agents. So this sister uh, put this, matter of fact, since we're going to go Hollywood, let me go ahead and put, <laughs> since y'all need me to go Hollywood. All right, so this sister <laughs> put this video out of what took place on the red carpet recently with Halle Berry. Press play. Sometimes black reporters and black outlets are pushed to the end and unable to get the proper interview that they need. Well, tonight, Holly Berry interviewed with everybody. Um, as she approached myself and the only, I was the only black woman on the carpet and there was only one black male. As soon as they got in front of Lamar and myself, her PR said that she had no time to speak to us. And they began to walk away. <laughs> And, um, you know, I prepared all day. I was super excited. Who doesn't want to talk to Holly Berry? You know what I mean? And she looked at me and she looked at Lamar and said, no, you guys are going to have me skip. I can't skip my brother and my sister. And she turned back around and walked right up to us and we interviewed her. And I just, I feel like I'm up a lot. I don't know why I got emotional and I still am, but... I take so much pride being black and being one of the only black faces in so many spaces that I'm in. And I just felt like for her to turn around and get- Oh my God, I'm Lamar Dawson. Um, can I just say- The opportunity, I have a newfound respect for <laughs> It was her. hard, you know, I never worked that hard. I just want to encourage every black woman and male to continue to break barriers in all of these industries because our faces will be seen and our voice will be heard. All right, all right, folks. So uh, say it again, guys. That was Emerald Marie, who was a journalist. So let me let me unpack something for y'all so y'all can understand. When we did our first Hollywood show on Washington Watch on TV One, um, that was a year I got nominated. So I told them, I said, hey, I'm going to go on the Image Awards. And so they said, hey, you know, we don't have the money to do the show. I said, well, I guess it's going to be a repeat next week. But I'm going to be in L.A. <laughs> And so then TV One was like, oh, damn, I guess we got to do this show because Roland's going to L.A. And so we did. And so Jay Feldman, who's my executive producer, Jay uh, it was a Saturday. Jay was freaked. He said, man, we got to hire a booker. I said, man, chill out. I said, give me till Monday. He's like, what do you mean? I said, I got this. So between Saturday morning and Monday morning, I personally booked 35 celebrities to do our show. So what was interesting is that now, just so y'all understand, and this ain't flossing, but I don't talk to publicists. I don't talk to agents. I don't deal with business managers. I deal with talent. So these are people who I text directly. I hit personally. So folks were excited to do it. The publicists were pissed. They were angry. Who approved this? The person who's paying you. So... Nikki Weber, who worked for TV One, Nikki said, Roland, I'm getting cussed out by all these publicists because you booked the talent directly. So everybody did the show except one, Lee Daniels. So we were at the Image Awards and I saw Lee. I said, Lee, man, we had a fantastic show. We did three different shows. I had a whole thing on black directors. Would have been, he's like, what do you mean? I said, oh, your publicist canceled. Lee had agreed to the show. Y'all, Lee said, what the fuck you just say? I said, your publicist canceled the interview you agreed to do. He said, I'm gonna deal with that tomorrow. That's what Lee Daniels said. When I was at CNN, something came up dealing with Hugo Chavez in Venezuela, and Danny Glover was, I wanna talk to Danny Glover. So, tracked down Danny Glover, publicist, Danny Glover, was nasty. 
to one of my CNN people. Talk, treat him like bad on the phone. Danny was, actually, Danny was actually in Venezuela. Was something else we want to talk to him about. He was actually in Venezuela doing the project. He said, I said, I, he said, I can't do this show. He said, Roland, I love to do it. I said, by the way, <laughs> let me let you know about your publicist, how nasty she was. When the publicist called back, whole different attitude to, the, to my booker. And the booker came to me, he's like, well, Ben, what happened? I said, oh, I said, no, I told Danny. See, I don't play that game. So here's what I need y'all to understand. As a matter of fact, I'm going to show y'all in real time what that sister was talking about. This is from this year's NAACP Image Awards red carpet. Kiki Lane is in If Bill Street Could Talk. So I'm going to start the video, and what you're going to see is Henry Peterson was shooting. And so I'm looking at people talk on a red carpet, and then all of a sudden, all of a sudden, I see Kiki. Watch what happens. So I'm about to get, uh, so I'm about to get, uh, let's see here. Um, so you saw me waving at Kiki. The camera's going to come back. Now watch huh? this. Oh, wait, it's going to take... No, we, we, we talked in D.C., yeah. Now, come back to me. The publicist, not black, is telling Kiki she can't come talk to me. She was trying to get Kiki to go and talk to Access, Hollywood, and E.T. They were three spots down from me. You can't see Kiki, but Kiki is telling her I've talked to him before. He interviewed me in D.C. When they were in D.C., I interviewed her, Regina King, Barry Jenkins, and others. Press play. Yes. Yeah, I know how you doing. I'm good. Okay, so last... Hold up. Did y'all hear her? I told her we've talked before. Y'all, the talent pays the publicist. But these non-black publicists, they believe they control who the black talent should talk to. Now, this happens on red carpets all of the time. And what it requires, it requires for black talent to let folks know that's not how it's going down. Let me take you back to 2016. No, we're going 2012. Y'all hear me say I'm the original gladiator for Scandal. Here's why. Because Kerry told me when they were shooting Scandal, when ABC did not put Scandal on the 2011 fall season, I sent a tweet out expressing my disappointment. So I sent the, I was the first fan tweet, Scandal, before y'all even saw the episode. <laughs> so ABC put Scandal on in the spring of 2012 as a replacement show. We had, Joe, we had, Columbus Short on Washington Watch. Judy Smith came on Washington Watch. We were trying to get Kerry Washington. Kerry, they, ABC kept giving us the runaround. And all this, and then, so, 2012, we're in Charlotte at the Democratic National Convention. I'm waiting to do a stand-up for TV One's coverage. My photographer uh, says, Roland, there's Kerry. Kerry was in the booth next to me. Kerry goes... I said, hey, Carrie, what's going on? Carrie goes, I'm going to do your show. She turns to the publicist, quote, get me on Roller's fucking show. <laughs> Carrie Washington was on my show that fall. I'm explaining this to you because I need y'all to understand what happens when black talent makes it perfectly clear you're not going to marginalize black media and black journalists and you're not going to act like the only black people exist and he's my boy Kevin Frazier my boy know him well or the other black folks who work uh, 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 who work for the uh, major entertainment outlets but that's the game they play and what they've done is they have brainwashed many of these black folks to think as if 
they work for them when the black talent is paying them. I told y'all, Kerry Washington. We did a sit-down interview with Kerry Washington, New York. Listen to this exchange. As I have to tell you this for our audience. Uh, I have I've run three black newspapers. I've run a black w website. Just do this, just do this. I've um, news editor of Black Magazine, <laughs> news director of Black Radio Station. Amazing. Uh, produced for Black Cable Network. Keep on. Now preach I'm just Black it, Cable preach Network. It, preach, preach. I've been in black media more than anybody else. <laughs> mm. And I have interviewed a lot of people, political entertainment. And what I, and I've told many people this, what I appreciate is your deal has been I am talking to Roland. I'm doing this media. 2012, we were back and forth trying to get you on, talk about scandal. I had, Ju I had uh, Judy on, I had Columbus on, I always, and, and I remember we were staying, I was doing a live shot, you about to do a live hit, and we didn't realize we were standing next to each other, and so we hugged, and you turned to the ABC person, you are getting me on TV One. Yeah. And you make that, you make that point that that's important, and I tell black folks in Hollywood all the time, we're Don't always forget here. Your Don't forget us. Don't forget where you come from. Don't forget your community. Why would you want to? It's who you are. You know, you can do everything, but don't let go of yourself to do everything. Do everything as yourself, with Ready. yourself, Ready. with your community. Otherwise, you'll be lost. Absolutely. Now, oh. let me give you a backstory. She was doing Jimmy Kimmel and some other shows. That's, that was for the HBO show. Uh, the movie with uh, Anita Hill, uh, Confirmation. Uh, they, that, that was, the, uh, that was the, uh, the movie. The HBO publicists initially were like, you get 20 minutes. And they were like, well, Carrie, you know, we got we to gotta go do Jimmy Kimmel and we got to go do uh, 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 the other NBC shows. And she said, they said, so we need an hour and Roland can get 20. She says, or they can get 20 and Roland gets an hour. We got 70 minutes with Kerry Washington. When Ava DuVernay was doing Selma, this took place in the interview with Ava DuVernay. You supported the films before anyone else. I will follow, middle of nowhere. Put me on your radio show. Put me on whatever you, Twitter, radio, <laughs> TV. I think you fly fighter planes. I don't know. You do a little bit of everything, but you always make sure that you support artists, independent artists, certainly for me. And I just want to really thank you. I appreciate it. Thank you. Good luck with it. Now, now, again, when she did I Will Follow, I didn't know Ava. I knew Sally Richardson Whitfield. Hmm. Sally hit me, had him on Washington Watch. That was Ava DuVernay's first national interview as a director. Wow. I'm explaining all of that because Carrie and Ava and others who I know make it a point of talking to black media, making it a point that when they shoot a movie, there better be black media people who are on the junket, that there better be black media people who are interviewing them, and not just black people who work at major news outlets, but black media outlets. Because see, before Ava was Ava, hmm. she was on Washington Watch. Before some of these other folks became who they were, they were on, they were in this black newspaper, and this little black radio show, hmm. and this black website. But see, what happens is, as folk get bigger, they forget those outlets. Now look, I totally understand amount of time, things along those lines, but I have personally witnessed how non-black publicists will walk their clients down these red carpets and will walk them past black media and they will only go to the major media outlets when in reality, who's gonna give them amount of time? Hmm. Now see, I ain't gonna really bust out the artist, but when we were doing Get On Up, <laughs> we had one, the James Brown movie, we had one of the prime, I mean, we got taken care of one of the prime positions. And I interviewed Mick Jagger, mm. and the director, mm. and Dan Aykroyd, mm. and Chadwick Boseman, okay. and Octavia Spence, and that was one person who was in the movie, who for some whatever reason, didn't want to sit down with me but wanted to go sit down with entertainment tonight. Now, here's what was interesting. Every single person I named got their own segment 
at least 10 minutes on a movie, I guarantee you she didn't get 30 seconds over there. See, my point is, you're going to need us. <laughs> you're going to need us. And when the stuff hits the fan, yes. when People Magazine don't call you back, when Entertainment Tonight and Showbiz Tonight, when all those shows don't talk to you, and now you're doing independent films, or now you're trying to produce, mm. and you don't have the big studio behind you, mm. who you think gonna put your story out? Mm. See, my problem is when you are paying them, but they act like they doing you a favor. Mm. And what's required is for black Hollywood, mm. for actors and actresses and directors, mm and producers to say no. Sterling K. Brown was asked backstage at the, one of the award shows, did he notice the lack of diversity on the red carpet? And he said he didn't. And what I'm trying to explain to y'all is, we see this every single year in all of these red carpets and all of these movie junkets. And what I need are for black folks who are doing these films to do what Spike Lee said when he said, I'm not talking to any media outlet unless y'all seeing a black reporter. And you know what happened? Huh. It caused all these white media companies to look around and say, damn, we don't have anybody black to send because Spike exposed the lack of diversity in their magazines and in their newspapers. They called Spike racist, but only wanting black people. But what he was actually doing was calling out their racism because they didn't have any black people. And what is required in order to change this system are for black people who are the who have the power, who are the talent of these movies, to stop being led around like little children mm. by publicists mm. who are telling them who to talk to or not. What I need are black folks in Hollywood to hit the red carpet and say, where are the black people? Mm. And to say, where are the outlets? Mm. Now, you can't talk to all 10, talk to two or three or four. But don't let them walk you past all of the black people. And I'm not just saying come talk to Roland because you know me. Talk to the sister next to me who you don't know. Hmm. Talk to the brother next to me who you don't know. Who That person needs to interview with you in order to come up. That person needs that one-on-one -on -one to be able to put on their reel <coughs> when they begin to apply for another job. They need that to show they've been able to do. But the only way you change this system is when you have black talent who decides to recognize their blackness and stop allowing non-black publicists to ignore black folks and black media on these red carpets. And it also means that when you make these movies, when you sit in, I've been to those junkets, and you've got all these white folks who are interns and all these white folks who are production assistants, and there are no black people. And these Hollywood studios don't even know who we are. they got to go hire an outside firm to bring in all the black folks because the studio has no clue. And then when we walk in, they have no idea who we are. I walk into a room, and she goes, uh, Miss Union, uh, this is Roland Martin. And Gabrielle's like, baby, that's Roland. <laughs> See, that's the game they play. And then the flip side is when you do get the interview, you got four minutes. My team will tell you, I don't do four-minute interviews. And if Ro got four minutes, Roland not getting on the plane. Straight out of Compton, they told me four minutes. I said, no, I don't. I said, Four plus four. And the, brother, and the brother was like, well, I was told four. I said, you better check again. And the little white girl said, no, no, it's, it's, yeah, he, he get two slots. He get eight minutes. <laughs> and my man, director, he said, well, F. Gary Gray he said, guess Roland getting eight. I'm saying that because Coretta Scott King did that. See, let me give y'all some history. Black Hollywood. Black actors, black actresses, black directors, black producers. Dr. King was assassinated April 4th, 1968. When they had the funeral, the white racists in the media, in the media, uh, in the media uh, group, said, no, it's white only. No, white, no black photographers, no black journalists. So Lerone Bennett, and Simeon Booker Come on, brother. went to Coretta Scott King and said, Mrs. King, white media is not allowing Ebony in to the pool to cover Dr. King's funeral. Mm. 
Coretta Scott King sent word, mm. and she said, let them know if Ebony and Jet is not in the pool, Come on. there will be no pool. Come on, man. Mm -hmm. And the white media had to back down. Monifa Sleep. And Monita Sleep. Come on, brother. Was allowed into the pool. That's the picture. And the reason you know that photo. That's right. Of Dr. King's daughter resting on Coretta Scott King's lap because it was shot by Monita Sleep. Monita Sleep became the first African American ever to win a Pulitzer Prize as a result of that photo. But the only reason it happened is because Coretta Scott King said there will be no press pool if black journalists, Ebony and Jet, are not allowed in it. Mm. And so I want every black person in Hollywood, I don't care if your publicist is white or male or Asian or Latino or gay or straight or transgender, I don't care what they are. I want you to do what I told y'all at the NAACP Image Awards when I won for best host three years ago. I want you to learn to return our phone calls. I want you to learn to include us in your projects. And when your pilot gets picked up, you ask the question, who are the black media outlets am I talking to? Where are the black newspapers? Where are the black websites? Where are the black television shows? Where are the black journalists? And when you walk that red carpet, you don't just stop and talk to Entertainment Tonight or Extra or CNN's uh, entertainment shows or Fox News. If you take the time to stop and talk to black media and do what Halle Berry did, you know why? Because Aretha did it. Because Denzel did it. Because Sidney did it. Because Bill Cosby did it. Because Richard Pryor did it. And the only way the system changes is when black talent in Hollywood use their power to actually do it. What that sister described has happened the reverse numerous times. And enough is enough of black folks being ignored on red carpets trying to talk to black people and put them in movies, put them in their newspapers, in their websites, in their radio shows. The only way it changes is when black talent has the audacity to do what Bill Cosby did when they said, who's my stunt man? And it was a white man in dark makeup. And Bill Cosby said, not again. And that's why the, that's why the Black Stunt Men's Association was created, because Bill Cosby said, ain't gonna be a white man in dark face as my stunt man. Y'all gonna go hire some black people. The only way this changes is black Hollywood wakes the hell up. So enough of the awards. Enough talking about black Hollywood, how things are great. It's time for black Hollywood to stand up for black media and for black journalists. Because when Hollywood wasn't calling you and when major white media were not calling you, it was black media that had your back. The family conversation is over. All right, folks, back to that whole my unfiltered video in just one moment. All right, folks, inviting you to come out swinging and join me for a day of golf at the University for Parents Golf Tournament on Saturday, June 22nd in Southwest Atlanta's Wolf Creek Golf Course. It's a golf tournament with a purpose, a fundraiser for the University for Parents, a program designed to empower parent learners through education, inspiration, and support. This is all tied to Susan Taylor's uh, mentoring program, National Cares Mentoring Program. Now, when you empower the parents, you also empower the children as well. The location of the tournament is 3000 Union Road, and the shotgun start time is 9 a.m. To register, go to www.u, letter U for parents.org, letter U for parents.org. Hey guys, tomorrow, uh, do me a favor when we do this here, uh, put the uh, website at the bottom of the screen here. Uh, it's a little small on that flyer. For more information, call 770-316-3487, 770-316-3487. And I certainly hope to see you there. Now back to your Roland Martin Unfiltered video.